Hello, welcome to the Square Bay Show with me, your host Rob, and Mr. Val Heffelfinger. In today's show, we're going to be answering a hot question that you've asked us. Who asked us? Well, well, the viewers, if you are watching this video, live, viewers. the viewers live at home. Uh, this is uh, this is a response video to uh, what seemed to be a hot topic brought up in the YouTube comments. Thank you to everyone in the YouTube comments for mm -hmm. asking this question. Um, and it was related to something that we covered in the Dwarf Arcane Journal. We've done a couple of very techy, crunchy shows the past couple of weeks. I've Deep. loved them. I actually walked away Deep. from the uh, I walked away from the Arcane Journal review, Val. Incredibly pumped for the old world. I uh, yeah yeah. How did you feel about it in post? Oh, great. No, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, also, just loving the Arcane Journal so much, you know? Mm. And uh, I guess I guess next week we get our things? I, I, I or It was a fever dream. I, I ordered a bunch of dwarf stuff, so I can't remember. Uh, I know I got all the, all the... I got the books. I got the dice. Dice! So, uh, so I look forward to actually having the book and flipping through it once and putting it on my shelf, along um, with all the other ones. Yeah, I, I, I am running an Old World event this weekend. I'm really excited. The uh, Dwarf Arcane Journal is legal at the event Ooh. uh so uh because obviously they've already been out there uh, and so uh, i know there's definitely a couple of keen dwarf players will be at the event um i'll either try to get recordings of their games or um i might ask our man richie if he'll just stay on the table for the weekend and, and record his matches that could be a really fun bit of content to produce actually uh, oh, a little little dwarfs in action on the table. Yeah, that would be fun. So I could be, I could do that. That would be really, uh, really exciting. So I'm running an event. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and there's loads of other community news that we should be covering. Uh, but the uh, the hot topic, if that's got, how are you? Before we get started, just uh, if you're fine, how are you? How how's things? Things are good, man. I mean, um, we've got we've got a lot of excitement happening in in my Warhammer world. Um, uh, first and foremost, the SBOT Square Based Online Tournament Finals are coming up at the end of this week. I think at the at, at the minimum, we'll stream them to uh, we'll, we'll stream that to the patron Discord, and then maybe try and get uh, a, a recording of it as well that we can throw up somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after that, we've got the <clears throat> Square Based Open Toronto, Robert. Which uh, you will be, of course, uh, crossing the pond to attend. It's booked um, in the calendar. I'm so excited. I in am the calendar. absolutely hyped to be coming over. So I hope everyone's excited to come and play and hang out. A, li a, little, a little bird asked me, uh, a.k.a. Peter the Falcon, uh, legendary, uh, a legendary man in his own right. He asked me, uh, uh, when is Rob arriving in Toronto? To which I LOL'd. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> And said, "I should probably start planting that seed. So let's 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 plant that seed. And figure out uh, actual arrival times and such. Because I believe Pete is making the journey as well. Oh, um, so do you want me so, to arrive? Do you want me to arrive like you know, like several days before? We could do some bits. We can coordinate. We can figure it out. Um, and uh, I just want to let everyone know today is the last day of the early bird special. Prices prices are low. One oh five Canadian." So for the vast majority of our of, of our audience, that's pretty much free. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be at 105 until the end of today, and that's today when we're recording, which is Wednesday, July 31st. So basically, the people in chat, if you wanted to get a, a Square based Open Toronto ticket for cheaper, 20 bucks off, uh, you're going to want to do that uh, immediate mall. Also, you might want to do it because Robert, how many tickets remain? For uh, the Square Base Open Toronto, can't be many. Is there forty? The what? How, what numbers are we going up to? We ha we're we total a uh, total of, of forty officially for sale, and then I got my VIP guest list. Um, that's uh, that's another eight. Uh, but uh, there's fifteen tickets available Shh, left already. Yeah, and and uh, we've only ever talked about it on the show. I posted about it to Facebook yesterday. Um, wow, so, that's uh, this will this will sell out. Um, and uh, you know, it's prompted me. Uh, I've I've written to uh, the uh, London Open uh, because I'm probably going to need to learn how to make a lot of terrain. Kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the 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 TO of uh, Capital City uh, Bloodbath, uh, who has been diligently making tables and stuff, is actually going to be providing a ton of the terrain, uh, and then topped up by my personal stash. 
Um, also, like every old world TO in Ontario is coming, uh, which is troublesome because I feel bad about asking any of them to TO so that I can play. So I think, Rob, I might actually have no choice but to like run an event I'm involved with and and like and like TO the thing, which is a little, little weird. I can come over and TO. Fuck you. You're not coming to Toronto to TO. You're but coming I can to Toronto. TO but play. I can TO and, and play. I'm just. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a real event. It's a real event. I feel like there should be a dedicated judge. That's fair. Uh, so, I have played. So, I have played my eighth. This. I think no. This. This old world event that's happening this weekend for me is my ninth old world event. You're just. You're an old handed old world man. Old hands. That's what these are. Hand. Old but sturdy. I hope. Uh, I've also. I also should note that um, there's. Uh, I asked Kicker, who who runs all of uh, Frontline Gaming's uh, Event Empire, uh, about when when tickets for the LVO would be on sale, and he laughed at me and said they've been sold out for ages. Uh, so I think. They, <laughs> <laughs> so I think they've been. So that one has been uh, in the where I don't know exactly how they're formatting or what's going on there, but uh, you know, at the biggest event, they're at uh, they're at I think over forty as well. Uh, there's the Michigan GT, which I wanted to shout out because I was checking out their pack. Oh, I love those uh, guys. Michigan, Michigan GT is is around here. Uh, TO is clearly bassed, although did uh, did snowflake a little bit. The missions are a bit different, but we're not talking about Nova, Nova standards here at all. Um, 2,500 points, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, and uh, some custom missions, which I haven't been able to delve into. But that one is at the end of September in Michigan, and uh, that event, I think, think is has very limited tickets left i think they're they're they've got room for around 30 something um so you know like good sized events um are are selling out so anyone who says uh, the game is doa is uh, patentedly wrong wrong well that actually leads into uh, my current com my current conversation uh, and the hot topic of today's video, this isn't going to be a super long video. Well, it depends. Depends how long the convo goes for. We don't, it's open-ended, so we'll go for it. So the response, the hot response that we're making uh, today is because during our Dwarf review, I made the, uh, you know, hyperbolic claim uh, that Old World is Games Workshop's second biggest game now. Uh, that's, uh, that's the... <laughs> Big, big news. And I think uh, like uh, some of our like cohorts in the kind of YouTube sphere have been making like, you know, where's the game at now? Uh, you know, what's been going on? How are sales? Th those sorts of things have been popping off. And, you know, what do events look like? Um, and I wanted to give some evidence and also kind of credence to why it's why it's the biggest. A special shout out uh, to my YouTube uh, commentator the other day who uh, said that we specifically have uh, destroyed the old world, which I thought was uh, really... Oh, that was nice. That yes, was nice. Yes, that was good. That was Actually, nice. I, I, I want to point out a uh, very, very... Uh, with great earnestness that actually we didn't destroy the old world. Oh, it was you, Rob. Yes. I was left out of that. I was not included in that sentence. Only the good things am I associated with for some reason. <laughs> I get to skate. I get to skate on. Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, but yeah, no, you destroyed the old world. Somehow the person who's been here every step along the way, laying uh, landmine after landmine and sabotaging the whole JTY affair. Yeah. Um, uh, I got away with it, and uh, you did not. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's kind of like start breaking down where my statement comes from and see, you know, and I guess, you know, this is a Which big... again is that, is, the, is that Old World is Games Workshop's second biggest game, the first being Blood Bowl. Uh, yeah, first being Blood Bowl, yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously 40K is Games Workshop's biggest game. And I guess we need to start talking about metrics, right? Like, what is, how are we starting to judge these things? And I think there's a couple of different metrics that we definitely can go through. Number one, it's how much is talked about online, right? And therefore in person, mm -hmm. you know, like the general buzz around an IP. And I guess we need to delineate that and separate that out from a game. Uh, secondly, okay. how much does the buzz translate to sales? Yeah, that's kind of the other element that I guess we need to talk about, uh, you know, sales being those kind of key factor. And for me, and also Games Workshop, it feels like sales uh, and interactivity with the specifically the miniatures in the game feel like uh, the only real metric that's of value. So let's kind of take what I think is a misnomer in uh, the 40k sphere, as an example. So law YouTubers are massive. Right, absolutely yeah. massive. If you don't know, law YouTubers normally there's like a there's like a wedge 
uh, or like a you know pyramid, uh, or at the very tippity top of the pyramid uh, is yeah. competitive gamers. Then you've got like some gamers. Then you have hobby people, the big section, that's the biggest, uh, second biggest. And then you got law and law is the biggest kind of like scoop. So if you were wanting to make a lot or get a lot of views or you wanted to get a lot of, uh, you know, you wanted to have a successful YouTube channel or something, then you would do, you would do really good law videos as many people do, right? That's the kind of- Yeah, uh, you would not do necessarily what we do. No, you, 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 <laughs> you would specifically not do what we do. Uh, and I'm coming at this as a professional who's done this for like 10 years, right? Two, I did two years yes. of Games Workshop and, and we're coming up to eight years for myself. And Val also has been involved in making YouTube content for himself, for frontline gaming, uh, and also has been like a fan of, you know, like YouTube content about Warhammer for a long time. So that is... Uh, something that you've got to pay attention to. But I think that that muddies the water a little bit. We've seen a lot of times from people who make like law videos and they have like a bajillion views. But actually, you know, your Warhammer tournaments don't necessarily get much bigger. Your 40K tournaments don't get much bigger. They seem, they seem in quotation marks, to have roughly kind of hit a plateau. Like there was a few years where things like the LVO and other... Uh, events, LGT in the UK and some other events got more and more increased attendance and players. Uh, and then we just kind of hit a plateau. That plateau doesn't seem to have had any, uh, have been affected necessarily even by the game's competence. At some points you had incredibly massive events like ninth edition LVO, one of them, where at that point the game was considered to be quote on quote unquote very broken but still had a very massive attendance right yeah uh, and while there's like a long-term negative effect of of the game not working very well and attendance dropping off we didn't see that and games workshop course corrected quickly enough that we didn't see that but it, i would argue that we've so first question to you val would you say it's a fair statement to say that we've seen generally attendance for 40k basically plateau like you know or the or the increases is far more in like much smaller than they used to be I used to I used to really know this, like genuinely know this. I used to, I used to actually crunch uh, attendance stats, uh, stealing from the, the the BCP data. I honestly can't tell you um, how much attendance has grown or not grown. I think it, it, for a long time it felt like really what was was limiting 40k's attendance numbers was um, was quite simply capacity. Um, like events events would sell out instantaneously. And then, uh, and that was it. So does that mean that there were, you know, a hundred tickets available and a hundred people demanding it? Maybe. Um, or was there room, was there room to grow? I think the bigger question though, that I would like to first delve into, cause we mentioned, I offhandly mentioned, you know, all of the, you know, these events that I've, I've been looking at mm. that are selling out, including our own, um, as maybe an indication of old world, not being dead. Do you think that first and foremost, the participation in events is in any way an indication of a game's popularity? Well, so that's that's a, that's a great question. I would say that that's one of the only metrics for a game's popularity. So like, uh, you know, with the community, I'll talk about the old world community specifically for a moment, like, you know, has had this kind of conversation, like, will the game survive? Should I invest in it? Is it going to be something that's continued? We've seen Games Workshop, you know, I mean, Old World is a game that Games Workshop once deleted, you know, uh, so it was yeah. Warhammer Fantasy Battle. So that happened. Yes, yeah, so it's a really fair fear to have and be asking questions about before I invest four, five, six hundred pounds, dollars, whatever it might be, into a game or, a, or an IP. Uh, well, what's the interesting thing? You're not you're not investing it into an IP. You're investing it into a game. Like if you're mm -hmm. if you're buying like at least the shot uh, because it's a great fucking mini to paint. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that you're investing into the IP. If you're buying an army, uh, which I feel like is is a large portion of the sales, uh, then you are buying into the the game you're buying into like the universe and you're also supporting the game in some ways right that's that's what you're doing um so that's my kind of so the measure of popularity same as like you can have someone watch 9000 40k law youtube videos but it doesn't mean that they've ever bought a single miniature and therefore mm -hmm. while they're you know they're in, i guess they're involved in the ip in some way but they're not involved in a way that, that will help the IP continue to grow and succeed. Like, yeah. apart from, I guess, but 
you know, if they see something cool, they're like, I like this, this is fun, and then they share it with their friends, then their friends ends up picking up some stuff, right? Then you generally, uh, like, you know, you're doing some word of mouth sales, effectively, is what you're doing. So it's, even though you're not necessarily, uh, like, purchasing, you're, you're advocating it to other people, right? You're, you're increasing its popularity. If you're discussing it online in a forum, if you've never bought a mini, but you're discussing it online in a forum or in a YouTube video or on TikTok or wherever you might be doing it, you're still increasing its profile, which, as you know, is brand IP, and therefore that is something you can sell to computer game companies and other stuff. So that is. But in my opinion, and that's because I'm someone who attends events, plays games, all of that stuff is a little bit superfluous to me because I don't really care about the brand recognition. I only really care, can I buy my minis, pick them up and go play a game locally or at an event? That to me is the only metric of success to me. So but you, I don't, so yeah. go on. No, I was going to say like that, that's, that's it. Like, can you get a game? Like, I think that's, that's a very, can very you get good, a game? Yeah. Like that's a very, very first, <laughs> first question. And I think, um, you know, like gaming groups, as in like like groups of pals, um, and and uh, you know circles of friends that you have that you can you know reach out to and play in your garage or in your basement or whatever. Especially when uh, a game is starting up, sometimes that's that's actually a hard place uh, to get a game because you know to convince your friends to take this kind of a leap, um, you know, which is you know say say you were playing 40k, say you're playing Kings of War, Ninth Age, whatever it was. Um, any number of different games to get them to pivot to a game, like you said, that had been canceled previously, that's going to be um, sometimes a tough sell, right? And it's also quite arcane. Uh, the game itself, although I maintain is good and satisfying to play, um, you know, doesn't live up to some standards of, of rules writing that even Games Workshop has achieved in, in recent history. Um, so yeah, can you get a game, I think, is a good metric. But I think for me, uh, to answer my own question too... Um, because who else am I talking to but myself? I mean, I, <laughs> you're talking I to me, buddy. Uh, but uh, no, I'm no, I love you so much. Um, but um, the thing I wanted to say was, I think, and, I, and I've, I've viewed this perhaps a bit cockily, and I think Games Workshop eventually did lean into this, and some of the community is annoyed by it, but I think it is true. People willing to go to especially GT level events where you have to take a weekend off, you know, you have to maybe travel. You've got to like commit a serious amount of time. Those people, uh, you know, are the types of folks, you know, for the Apple equivalent of, you know, they're the ones who lined up, you know, to get, you know, the original iPhone. You know, like they're the folks who like stand out in the rain for the first night of the release of the movie. Mm -hmm. Those are, you know, your early adopter crowd. And I would say, as I mentioned, just sort of anecdotally, like I feel like every TO in Ontario is coming to uh, the Square Based Open Toronto. Um, and I feel like that's kind of how GTs function. They're a place where a lot of community organizers will tend to coalesce and will tend to group together and get even more jazzed about what they're doing. So like, so like after like big events happen, um, those, those TOs often will go back to wherever they're from and say, I don't want to have to fly to Las Vegas or back in the day, Chicago for Adepticon. Hmm. I want to have this here with all my friends around here. And then they start to, you know, grow a community around them with even more intensity and interest. Um, or maybe they go to an event and they think that was shit. I, I can do better. Um, you know, like that kind of a thing. So I, I think tournaments create in a lot of ways, community organizers that then will build up local communities a lot more. So that, that first question, which is, can you find a game? becomes easier to answer more and more and more and more. And that has a cascading effect. They're, they're like, um, you know, the competitive community, or I should say just the event going community are very evangelical. The most engaged people, the people who are willing to, um, you know, give up their time, socialize with people, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, so I think that's kind of, I know, I know, I know a lot of the community grumbles about the prevalence of, of tournament play, match play, community, you know, competitive play, all that kind of stuff. But I think the reason why it does become um, such a... Uh, default? It's the uh, default, yeah, default game mode. mode. Yeah, default game mode or like unify, like sort of like organizing force is because the, the, the people who actually organize groups of people to play these games are the people who play in events. And if you if you can't if you don't have a friend who plays these games, 
the way you make them is by going to events. Um, that's it's like speed dating for nerds. Uh, I joke there was a there was a, a Facebook there's a Facebook meme that was like uh, something about and a very real statement, which is uh, it was a joke about uh, how you know um, uh, uh, you know men in 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 their thirties. Uh, they have two options, which is maintain friendships from from high school and and like university era, or don't have friends. And I I rarely comment on these types of things that pop up in my feed, but I commented or uh, play Warhammer. That might be a worse option for many, but it's the damn truth. Like you know, like th- these are ways to like find other people who um, may or may not be into things that you are too. So I really believe that ultimately if a tournament scene exists and is growing, that is not necessarily because there's a tournament scene that people are like, I want to go play in tournaments, but because it energizes the very people who organize their communities and, and who will get people to coalesce around a game. Um, so that's, that's why I think events are so central to, uh, you know, tabletop games being popular. And I'd say that the fact that, we're seeing events again. They're not wildly massive, but a forty-person event, a fifty-person event, um, is is a pretty good number. Um, and you know, the fact that they are selling out and they are happening with frequency is to me a great sign. Yeah. So, and there's a couple of other factors, right? Like having a standard to play means that pickup games are more easy to do. Like also, like the development of a community is something that's actually slower. While there are many local gaming clubs around the world, you know developing your old world scene or your old world community is actually pretty tough. Do the people who you play Age Sigma or Necromunda with or, you know, whatever it might be, do they want to move in and do they want to start playing old world with you? Is there enough of a local scene to play uh, games like old world? Also, you can't play games like that now at Games Workshop. It's, you can't play your pick up your play your pickup games at those stores. So it has to be something, it has to be yeah, something. A lot that, of them. Yeah, so it has to be something you do like more organically as a community feature, which interestingly, most gaming stores aren't really built around. Most gaming stores are built around because the much more profitable and successful magic, uh, you know, doing tournaments is like generally like event stores and those other things are fairly unique. You generally have to travel. There's like a lot of stuff that's happening, uh, you know, you know, factors. But mm-hmm. the first, you know, just kind of bring it back. The measure of success, to, the measure of success to me, has to be engagement online, and or at least the 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 measure of success that I used when I made that statement, you know, on the other show was that AOS is uh, that sorry that old world is the second biggest game. Yeah, the old world is the second biggest game after is, Necromunda. <laughs> keep going uh, after Underworld. Uh, yeah, is um, is because. Uh, it's based on engagement online and it's based on, you know, people turning up to play, right? And now you might be listening to this, but like, Rob, my local scene is absolutely dead. I recognize that, but that's also true for many other game systems. Someone earlier on said uh, they love, really love the game Moonstone. I really like the game Moonstone as well. I think it's really fun. But is there a big scene to play Moonstone? If you've seen me talk about, if you've seen me watch my videos or content for a long time, you know how much of a massive Shatterpoint fan I am. I love Star Wars Shatterpoint. I think it's one of the best games. So good. Super fun, mm-hmm. really engaging. Uh, but I've tried to run events multiple times and I've had absolutely no pickup and no reception, right? Does that mean the game is bad? Absolutely not, right? Does it mean this game is not popular? Absolutely, right? Because I can't get the people to come and play. Right, in for multiple, even when I made it as cheap as possible, made it as available as possible. Uh, but uh, and then also, I have a fairly large platform to talk about those things, right, and, and to get people yeah. to converse. So, people playing in games uh, is super, super important, and, and that's a good metric. And then the engagement online is the other metric. Uh, and also, this is obviously an incredibly uh, cogent metric that they use in uh, computer games. They use this in computer ah. games. Your player base is literally going to play those. <laughs> like this has been such a metric that is used by the game industry, which is absolutely massive. It's bigger than the film industry. It's huge. And they're mm-hmm. like, is this game successful? Yes or no? Based on the player base, are they playing it week two after the big launch spike or week one? Are they? Right. You know, that is a consistent. You could. There's loads of really great YouTube videos about this, about how people analyze these games. You know, like is World of Warcraft dying? 
because their subscription count and player base is going down. You know, uh, th these are constant conversations that people have uh, and they have them because they're about lucrative businesses, but also because, you know, do you want to go play World of Warcraft? Well, absolutely not if the attendance is down and no one's playing and this expansion isn't very good and blah de blah de blah de blah de blah Like, that's, you know, the, the thing. So based on that being my metric, let's talk about the online reception first. So okay. I So the online reception for Old World was massive. Yeah, and also the in-person reception. So I obviously attended the Old World Open Day and I attended the Age of Sigmar Open Day, uh, mm -hmm. both. The Old World uh, Open Day was bananas. And there's a video back on Squarebase, if you want to go watch it out, where they had a queue at Warhammer World, which is where I went. I was queuing, I personally was queuing from seven in the morning, doors were at 10. Um, I was queuing yeah. from very early, I took soup uh, with me. And the queue- You gotta, went, have, gotta have a cup of soup. Gotta have it. And the queue went all the way to the river which is a very long way, I need you to know. Uh, they had to do a one-in-one out system. They still had a queue till like two in the afternoon. Uh, they completely sold out of everything that was on the shelf. It was bananas. All of the staff were perplexed. They were blown away. They did not know what was happening. It was yeah. stunning. Uh, AC Mar open day, I just strolled in at like 11 uh, and hung out. Right uh, <laughs> uh, now, that's because I, I think that's for a couple of different factors. Uh, yeah. But then, and we talked about it at the time as well. And then since then, the online reception and you, as the audience, are exactly the you know you are giving me my own evidence. The view, the shows that me and Val do. I mean, Val's hilarious. I love doing a show with Val. I think we've got great chemistry. I think these are fun and engaging videos. Uh, but ultimately they're old world focused and they're actually the very tip of the old world. Me and Val aren't making like law videos. We should, we've talked about that. We're gonna do that in the future, right? Uh, <laughs> but we like, you know, um, but we are talking about the competitive edge of old world tournaments. Yeah, we're, well, yeah, and we're talking about, well, or at the very least the nitty gritty of the mechanics of the game and 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 how it actually plays and interplay of units and yeah the crunchiest stuff which honestly yeah i think as far as like what captures the majority of people's imagination um uh is probably the least viable um and i think this is actually reflect it it's one of those weird things because again just like the the like uh the tournaments thing is is again not the be all and end all i think i think the audience should should know that that like I, I would never say that the majority of, of for example, 48K players have anywhere been anywhere near a tournament, right? Yeah. But I think as far as like seeding a game is concerned, and even if you look back at AOS, what what actually kept AOS alive and literally saved it on the operating table was its event community saying Correct. that, no, fuck, fuck you. Uh, this game sucks. We're not going to let that be. We're going we're gonna to find a way to make this work. We're going to play. We're going to get people excited for it. And eventually, you know, um, you know, a lot of what the event community was doing wasn't just incorporated into AOS as core mechanics and fundamentals. And the game got off the ground. And I think it has organically grown its own world and community that that, uh, you know, maybe, you know, uh, isn't even really heavily based on uh, former fantasy players. Um, so, like, anyway, the reason the reason why I'm I'm, I'm talking about um, uh all, all that stuff is that I look like I lost my train of thought. It's okay. It's okay. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. So, <laughs> so the, so the, so the in-person reception was really high. And then the online reception, Squarebase family, you know, everyone in the Squarebase Patreon, which is a daunting Patreon now. It's a daunting amount of yeah. people in our Discord. Like, it's incredibly tough. We've talked about this already. Me and Val have had this conversation. It's a lot of people to talk through and manage. Uh, there's so much chat happening about every army every day. It's crazy. Val himself, like, I have a, a WhatsApp group for the attendees of my Old World events. Val will attest that it is consistently popping off. Uh, like yeah. a very active community. And then let's just talk about what I do for a living. For a living, I make videos on Twitch and YouTube. I make those consistently. I also obviously look at what other people are doing in my sphere of, of work, my peers, right? And Old World consistently performs almost at 40K levels. Very, very successful. Yeah, I when I was talking to, and this will sound like a, a bit of a dig, but when I, you know, I went on and I did a... Um, 
a, a couple battle reports with Tabletop Tactics. It was really, really fun. Got to hang out with, with Lawrence Baker there. And then finally, after some delay, my, uh, my sort of YouTube debut came out. And, you know, it did. I looked at the numbers and I was like, I figured I, got, I had to book an agent. I had to get ready. I was going to be internet famous. Like, this is a big deal. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it yeah. did numbers. I think, I think, you know, I only check it like twice a day. So I think it's up to like 50 something thousand. 58, but 58 like, buddy. 50, got, yeah. you know, 58,000. But, uh, you know, and I reached out to him. I was like, hey, so is everything cool with Old World? And he's like, yeah, Old World does bad 40K numbers. But that sounds like a dig. But the fact of the matter is anything that's not 40K doesn't do any numbers <laughs> like and so the fact that old world has those kind of legs on what what is like his bread and butter is 100 percent warhammer 40,000. Mm. the fact that he has something that could even get into the conversation uh is is a big deal um and uh and really i think quite notable and you see channels um like ours um um uh, also uh mountain mini so many others that were like um you know sort of on the the release and also just genuinely enthusiastic and passionate about it and now when you see now that the wave has kind of receded from hype um they have maintained the audiences we have maintained an audience which i am so thankful for but also impressed by it gives me hope for the game in the sense that people are still interested in what is often very crunchy content about this um and are still engaging with us at like crazy amounts like i, I love how much uh, interaction we get um, so yeah, like all that, all that stuff to me bodes well in the sense that those folks didn't, uh, pay a lot of attention and then, and then give up the contents, create the content creators didn't suddenly invest, you know, like, you know, make a few videos for the review boxes that they got, um, and then abandon it. <clears throat> They've kept up with it. 40 K still de very much paying the bills, but some legitimate channels that I think, uh, are able to, you know, hang their hats on the creation around old world content. So I'd say, yes, engagement is there. But that is not to, is that to say that it outpaces AOS engagement and online activity? Well, so there's one person in the world you would ask about that. Like, like I, I, I don't, and this is not to toot my own trumpet, but I think the person that does the Age of Sigmar Stat Center every week covers the World Team Championships for Age of Sigmar live streaming and also does a lot of Age of Sigmar content, like a lot. Auspex Tactics is here? <laughs> it's, it's Auspex, he's here. <laughs> uh, so that would be me, right? Like, and uh, and I think, I think Age of Sigmar is really interesting as well because Age of Sigmar delineates uh, a lot, sorry, separates out a lot from 40K, whereas 40K is Space Marine focused and f Space Marines plus other stuff. Whereas Age of Sigmar has, like you said, has developed a more organic community where someone has long time been an Iron Jaws player or a Fire Slayers player or a Soul Black Grave Lords player. In fact, Stormcast Eternals over the past like two to three years um, has not been the most popular faction in play at any point uh, in mm -hmm. those life cycles. It's always been another faction. Gloomspec Gits have always been really popular. Seraphon, Soul Black Grave Lords. And in fact, uh, having reviewed almost all of the factions now for Age of Sigmar 4 upon release, um, many of the factions are nowhere near as popular as other factions. Like Soul Black Grave Lords and Safes of Darkness outstrip ogres massively fire slayers massively you know uh so there's some very clear fan favorites in those groupings as well uh which outstrip the others and you know you see that also in tournament attendance and also uh you know in representation in old world like dwarfs popular orcs and goblins popular um uh, warriors of chaos popular those are just popular factions right that have got a lot of like uh you know they have more fans than some of the other uh, armies and factions have fans so, yeah. uh, but yes, I would say that the launch of Old World outstripped the launch, because I'm currently in the launch of Age of Sigmar, uh, but for me as a content creator and me as a provider of information, uh, and maybe I'm not very good, maybe no one wants to listen to me, but I have looked at what my peers uh, have also done, if that makes sense, uh, and my peers uh, also are not doing what I would say is Old World numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. So, with that said, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that uh that doesn't mean that like age of sigmar is dying or dead i don't think that it's a really great game age of sigmar 4 is the best it's ever been super excited to play it's really fun uh and really engaging so i just want to be really clear about that uh but that doesn't mean that the numbers lie right and age of sigmar is probably developing a fan base and old world has got a returning fan base 
But yes. I would also say that it's developed its own fan base over the years thanks to things like Total War, which is something yes. I was saying a lot beforehand. And you can't really ignore the shin numbers of Total War players in the world, right? They're huge. So, and, and I think this is actually where I think why we haven't actually seen this yet. Because I actually think that uh, Old World uh, uh, has the upshot, has the upside, and this is crazy, but to be um, certainly certainly at shoulder to shoulder with something like 40K. And I want to point out here too, so a couple things I want to point out here. Uh, one, uh, in the investor report, GW, which I really wish I had a chance to really deep dive a bit more yesterday, but uh, hopefully I can, I can talk to it at more length another time. Uh, but uh, in the investor report, in sort of the, the preamble from, from our, our boy Kev, uh, he talks almost apologetically about how the last time uh, they were in a release year for a new edition of 40K, that they always do note that like those are their biggest years. Yeah. Right. And and that, you know, like, let's let's look at the numbers that we've done this year through the lens of the fact that, yes, they're very good. But, you know, this is where we make hay. We make hay when we release a new edition of Fort Warhammer 40,000. And in reading between those lines, I think that something that, that GW is, is very aware of is that, you know, you don't want your you know, you, you don't want spikiness in your revenue like that. You want to have consistent upward upward growth in in your in your revenue and if you're always fighting uh because you're generally spe generally speaking you're measured over your previous years uh over your previous year's performance you want to have other and i think they used to refer to it as legs of the stool you want to have other games that they can they can hang their hat on um and certainly um aos is is one of those but i think they're also looking for other ways to generate revenue that can match Warmer 40,000, also diversified. Taste and changes, you know, uh, taste and preferences change. 40K could get played out. Like the, it could, people could start losing interest. They, they, they need to have other IPs, other things that can sustain the company. Um, and I think that that's, that's to me very clearly hinted at there that they, that they are trying to, to get there. So when you look at something like Warhammer the Old World, aka Warhammer Fantasy, um, you have there. Uh, something that has developed a lot of um, potential new customers. They call out in the uh, strategic report, I think, something also rather telling, uh, which is contrary to everything that they had in their release marketing, uh, sales suggest that it is appealing to both new and veteran hobbyists alike. Um, they then say, as with everything we do, we have grand plans for the years ahead. Uh, now they do, <laughs> um, but like uh, maybe not at the beginning. And you can tell maybe not at the beginning because all of the other things, what did we say? The tip, the absolute tippy top of the pyramid. And by that, I mean, uh, by the, the least, the least relevant, probably from like a, a, a sort of mass appeal perspective, that very tip of that pyramid is always going to be actually putting models on a table with terrain, playing with people because it is the highest degree of effort to be able to do that. Yes, even high, even higher degree of effort to do that in an evolving meta so that like a competitive player has to do that at pace. They have to be able to keep up. They've got to like be paying attention. They got to be practicing. So like that tip of the spear is a very small portion of your, your, your potential customers, because for whatever reason, not everyone's willing to invent an alias and devote their life to <laughs> playing tabletop <laughs> games. Um, so <laughs> that's probably a good thing. We need, you know folks to run the world. Uh, so that's great. Um, but so this is weird tippy top, but what have we not seen from games workshop with old world? We have only seen the game and, and, and I would say compared to most releases, we've seen a lot more of the game than, than with other releases. We got every, every single potential faction had rules on release. Mm. Um, you know, like all that kind of stuff, but what don't we have? We don't have new models. Well, I was about to say we, that we Could, don't. We, you, we barely have. We barely have access to old models. So if you're a hobbyist, it's actually hard to get your 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 Elise Duchard. Mm. We don't have lore. Black Library was not involved in in uh, Black Library. To my to to what has been one of my greater disappointments, Black Library was not clearly involved in any sort of a coordinated launch to to supply new lore for this incredibly interesting setting and period. So that is ripe for, for a potential. 
Um, the RPG side, I believe, if it's not out, um, Cubicle 7, is it Cubicle 7? Yeah, uh, yeah. Something like that. We'll be releasing an Old World-themed uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay uh, uh, edition, if it's not already out. But so, like, all of the things that support the bigger pyramid are actually the least served. The only people getting served right now for Old World are the tabletop players and the video game players who contribute to GW's bottom line via licensing. But right now, with, with all of the interest that we've had, with all of the engagement that we've had, everything that we've seen, it's literally the smallest population. So, yeah, I, I think that to me is rather indicative of, a, of an incredibly big opportunity for, for Games Workshop to have something that could once again rise to being sort of a core franchise, core IP, um, and uh, yeah, I, perhaps that's your point. Well, my point is that it's already there, but I think you hit on an incredibly good point because not only was like, so the sales was also like, you know, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a, a dud. Like they're like, hey, by the way, we're releasing, we're releasing rules to play the game. You're like, oh, amazing. New models, like, yeah, maybe like three. You're like, oh, okay. This is the old stuff though. Some of it very old. You're like, oh, yes. oh. Okay, not sure about that. By the way, it's all limited stock, so can't necessarily get it. You're like, okay, yep. great, but it's for all of the armies, right? No, just two. Just <laughs> two. You're like, oh, okay. But like all of the armies are playable. No, half of them specifically, and we can't say this enough online, half of them are not legal. I want to be yep. really clear. Did you like Skaven? Fuck you. Right? Fuck did you, you like did you like Lizardman? Fuck you. Right? You're eat like, shit. oh like, yeah, eat shit and die. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like And you know what though? Like, you know what the tip of the spear said? They said, fuck you. No, yeah. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it anyway. And like that's the tail wagging the dog. And this so often happens with Games Workshop, right? Where where and I mean, in Games Workshop's case, it's the tail wagging the dog. For any other normal company, it would be uh, we do what our customers demand. Um, but like People just said, "Oh, that's okay. oh, the, we're not we're not supposed to use these rules. Cool, we're going to use them anyway." There's not an event in the world right now that I'm aware of that does not allow the legacy armies or the renegades. We've been losing that one, yeah. uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, like, and and so yeah, I fully anticipate that this will be a fully supported game at this point, uh, and I never actually have anticipated anything other than that. But but yeah, like there the the barriers to entry for engagement have been a mile high. Yeah. And the enthusiasm uh, for it... Has been um, a mile high. Has, has been higher than that. Mm. And, you know, maybe this is a bit of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I used to joke that this is sort of like joining uh, Project Mayhem and Fight Club, where you got to stand on the porch while someone comes out and calls you too fat for two days before they let you in. Um, but that's effectively what the people who enjoy, uh, you know, the warmer fantasy um, setting are doing is like you've you've they, they open the door a crack and um and now everyone is is like just trying to scramble through and there's a lot of people willing to put up with you know not the tightest rule book but great rules um i've been i've been working i've been chatting back and forth with the person who runs uh toe.whfb.app the best resource that you could possibly use to play this game. Mm. And, you know, like every, every line, every, every rules entry now, he's actually cross-linked so that you can, you can do a little drop down. You can see all the other places it's mentioned because all the rules for magic missiles aren't just under one place called magic missiles. Um, and then you can also see all the FAQs related to it, or at least that's something he's developing. So like, so basically, it's like, oh, this rule book is like impossible to navigate and find all the things in. Cool. Well, there's someone in the community who's who solved that problem. So what's your next move, Games Workshop? Come on. How are you going to stop us from playing this game now? And I don't know if there's a better oh, oh, sorry, sign Games of a healthy community than that. Yeah. Sorry, Games Workshop. Did you not release? Uh, did you not release an army builder? Okay, there was one the second day. Right yeah. now, that, now there are three. Okay, rules references. Yes, ability to play online. Yes, you've got Warhol. Yeah, like there is like every every like opportunity to defeat it has been like knocked down. I agree with you, and that's kind of my point. That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to like, uh, you know, talk about. As I'm saying, like all of these challenges, like, and I think maybe that's a great point. I hadn't actually brought up the fact that 
uh, it was going to be. I just knew because it was a Games Workshop game, it would be difficult. You would have to just, they ha they do not, their pathway, their customer journey is not something that they ever negotiate or think about. They are consistently trying to develop problems for you as a customer to jump through. I think at this point it is uh, a, uh, it's not a bug. It's not it's a bug a in the system. It's a feature, yeah. like yeah. because you talk about it and negotiate about it online. So, yeah. so my first bit. Be, so I, I think uh, so. Yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah. D difficulty to entry is actually uh, the secret sauce of I think Games Workshops. Mm. Uh, everything. Yeah. So like, uh, like, and this this is this is for for all of it. If you're into the lore, oh, you think you could read a book? No, 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 no. You you like Horus Heresy? Cool. You read one book? Oh, that's cute. There's a hundred of them, and they're all four hundred pages long. <laughs> You know, so like, uh, so so for those who do get into it, there's a real badge, you know, like there's a real like real, I don't know, sense of like a commitment. Mm -hmm. And also when you meet people who can also speak that language, who are fluent in, you know, whatever part of this that you like, uh, there's a real bond there. I think I think that's part of what makes uh, Games Workshop stuff so sticky is that, you know, it, if you scratch the surface and like it a little bit, the pool is infinite deep. Um, and you and you just can't swim out of it a lot of the time. It is a perfect ADHD trap. I, um, yeah, and yeah. like the elements. I guess the point I'm making is that like the elements of that trap uh, that make uh, that make um, uh, things so sticky barely exist for old world. Um, and and the investment has been essentially nothing as far as Games Workshop is concerned. We're talking about a team. I don't know if it measures in in you know like we're talking about sculptors, army painters. Rules writers, could it be more than 10 people? I don't, I doubt it. <laughs> um, you know, like I, I, I don't have an inside look, but uh, you know, there's two core, there's two main rules writers um, and there's just not a tremendous output uh, for uh, new sculpts. So, so it suggests to me that the, there's not a ton of people uh, allocated to this in a studio, um, you know, the, that includes, I think in the, in the investor report, over 300 people work in the games workshop main studio. That's who produces AOS, that's who produces 40K. Um, so yeah. Okay. So yeah. So, uh, online reception big. And then also if we take, you know, like, and again, this is my professional, so maybe there's some bias here, my professional, like, um, you know, e ecosystem in, you know, YouTube videos and other stuff that's created a massive uptick in uh, old world interest all across the world, all across the video platforms, all across the different creators to the point where some creators are pivoting away from other content that they made, uh, whether it, especially if it was 40k uh, to move into old world, it's just something that they feel more, you know, like it is more worthwhile. So that's number one. And then the number two is event attendance. And we've talked about this a lot in the conversation already. And obviously I'm super mm -hmm. lucky because I run a venue in Nottingham and also I do a show about the old world. So, you know, I obviously like have got an ability to talk about events I'm running and those events are well attended. And I get a lot of repeat customers as well. I try really hard to make my venue really nice. We have comfy chairs, nice terrain. We do free drinks. We try to make it like a really nice experience. But ultimately, these people wouldn't come back if they didn't think that playing old world was a fun experience. It's kind of a joke I had with all my friends at the start of the edition. I was like, I was like, oh, I've got loads of people signed up to my events for some reason. He was like, oh yeah, wait till they've played it. They're not coming back. That's not true. Oh. That's that that hasn't been the case. It hasn't been that they've spent all this time building and painting their armies and they've put them on the table. What's actually happened is they've spent all this time building and painting their armies. Then they've gone off and built another army, or they've like modified their list and they've come back and they've played it again and they've tried another list or they've tried a different system. I haven't even done much to change up the rules. I haven't like changed the scenarios around much. I haven't changed up uh, the victory point conditions. I've done none of those things. And, zero of those things. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, zero of those things. I've just been like, you know, this is the game format. Go play. And people are like, cool, this is fun. This is engaging. And they seem to be, and I try to throw a good event. I do. But like it's the game ultimately because they wouldn't come back whereas how many of how many of them are repeat customers uh, i they, I, I would say like 60 percent are gonna be repeat customers like okay. some like very high like and then they they normally will turn up once they like haven't played an event before or you know something new and then they'll play again we've already run a team event we did a doubles event you know, and all of those are well attended. And this is just one little bit of the world. You know, sure, I'm in the mecca of wargaming in Nottingham uh, mm -hmm. in, in the UK, but uh, so maybe it's harder for smaller communities, you know, the Portugal, the Philippines, all these places where I know there's smaller age sigma communities, maybe there's smaller old world communities even than that. 
Uh, but <laughs> those are the particular ones where I'm pretty sure they never stopped. Um, <laughs> like if, like if, it, it, well, I mean, that's that's actually a genuine thing, too, that I think uh, bears out. Someone mentioned uh, earlier um, uh, Google Trends. Have a look at Google Trends. And I think Google Trends is something I do pop in on because uh, it, it can be sort of interesting. I still don't quite understand. It's all, rel- it's all relative to, to different things. But uh, when you compare AOS, for example, to... Um, so Age of Sigmar as a, as a search term to Warhammer the Old World or Warhammer Old World, um, uh, you see that uh, Old World surpassed AOS in, in sort of online interest uh, for a brief moment uh, around launch and sort of had a, had a peak uh, moment at that time. Uh, but there is a line um, in, in the Google search terms that never deviates uh, or at least has always had a strong base of support and correlates strongly with old world and uh, and less so to an ex- and less so with AOS and that's the search term Warhammer Fantasy. Warhammer Fantasy never really goes away. And you when you when you look at the end times, uh, for example, uh, when you go back all the way to 2015, which you can, um, the popularity of the search term Warhammer Fantasy never really goes away. And that to me is kind of fascinating. <laughs> Um, because, um, what's driving that. And I think it's stuff that we've touched on, which is a lot of the games and interest and, you know, IP lore, all that stuff that was actually just sort of abandoned to third parties over the years, whether that's the, uh, uh, warmer fantasy role play, um, you know, um, the, you know, Fermentide, Total War, all those types of, 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 um, licenses, um, have maintained that, that flame. And you see that old world is a, relatively new um uh, so, so. term right um and um and uh, and yeah i mean and if you also look at the three combined together and you look at the the spikes of of interest you see old world um absolutely dummies uh age of sigmar and uh and and warhammer fantasy at release uh age of sigmar in a new edition release year uh does not approach the peaks that uh, that that old world uh, did uh, no. that spike of interest at the beginning? Yeah, you can see um, that on the screen right there. It's release. Yeah, over on the left hand side, oh. you can see you can see where the old world was released. Uh, those big red spikes over there, and then the Age of Sigma Four announcement, kind of early. Uh, you, so you get towards the middle of that graph, and then obviously right now we're in the current Age of Sigma Four release, which is over on the far right hand side there, and it is just not close to the big red spike that you can see. Uh, none of this is to none of this. I'd like to be really clear is to is to put down Age of Sigma. It's a great game. Age of Sigmar, though, has a lodestone around its neck. It does. It has, and this is as a fan of the game, and if you're an old world fan and you don't like that, I like it. I'm sorry, but that's just true. I do. I think it's great. It's a lodestone mm-hmm. in that every hobby store you go into in the world, some dickhead tells you that it destroyed the game that they love, right? And then sure. that it's Age of Shitmar. And it, you just cannot escape that. It has got an absolute like pariah mark on it and will for all time, even though it's a great game, even though it's got a really amazing community, it will. Go on. I, I, I don't know how true that is anymore. It's still true. And I didn't, it's still true. Well, so, so I, I mean, like, so you said for all time. Oh, okay. Uh, and once by so for so Age of Sigmar had the blood of Warhammer Fantasy on its hands. Yeah. And it could never get those spots off, whatever the line is from Macbeth. <laughs> um and and um and I would have wholeheartedly agreed with you until Old World came out. Because yes, there's always gonna be haters and stuff, but now and especially too, <laughs> and I, I don't wanna give any credit to it. But they're also the the whole like the two mini lines, the two miniatures lines being fully separate. Yeah. Um, making them two entirely distinct entities. Um, maybe there's some wisdom there. Um, maybe that maybe that isn't a, a necessarily poor choice. Um, making them two different things because the the stuff that those guys uh, and probably some some gals too uh, are bitter about. Um, well, they're getting literally that back, right? And like, so like we were very critical of the lack of new, new models. And I still think um, they should have a lot more new models. And I still think there's going to be perhaps an entire army's worth of new models coming up pretty soon. Mm. Um, you know, um, but like that, 
that group of angry people, some of them will always be angry, but now they have the, they've been thrown the bone that they've been hungry for, for 10 years. Right. Yeah. And AOS now is free to evolve on its own, on its own timeline. And I think honestly has, right. So like mm. to yes. me, to me, the, the, the biggest threat, um, I think from players, as far as like stealing actual players and people interested again on that tippy top, like that very high, the very pointy pyramid um, was to 40 K just because a lot of people who love the game of, of, of like playing the game on the tabletop, those committed gamers were 40 K players um, and, or became 40 K players when this went away. Right. Um, and so like, I, I always thought that was the biggest threat. I think AOS again is an organically grown thing to itself, which is kind of a miracle. It's a blood, starting... bowl. It's a blood bowl game. <clears throat> a- AOS? Yeah, because Blood Bowl was Blood Bowl didn't exist for fifteen years, twenty years. You know, like it's what I'm saying. It's got the same journey that Blood Bowl went on, where uh, Blood Bowl got stopped. Uh, you know, and then it became uh, its own creature run by the community. And the launch of Age of Sigmar was very much like don't do points, don't do a thing, uh, abandoned like the community that Warhammer Fantasy Battle players like, I hate this now, screw this, you know, very fairly. Uh, and then it became its own creature. And sure, Games Workshop have wrestled it back like with Blood Bowl, but very much like the community is very like, uh, does not get kowtowed. It's just like, they're like, we're going to do this thing. And then the community is like, nah, like, that yeah. sounds love rubbish. So yeah, that's, that, 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 that's like any, any creative endeavor, you have control of it until you publish it. You know, you have control of it until you put it out into the world. Yeah. Um, you know, like, so like, I, I think, um, I think if, if something is intrinsically good, even if flawed, which I think is what, what old world is, um, you know, if, if people will take, take it and run with it, uh, whether or not you really want to, uh, you know, do anything more with it, that's just going to happen. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess, um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's what we've seen. I, I just want to wrap up my point about AOS though, is I think the fact that both games exist now, um, both puts AOS in context. So um, to an extent, I think this is what Horus Heresy did for 40K, gave context to the current world building of, of 40K, gave it, a, a, again, that, that like ocean of, you know, you scratch the surface and there's just this endless cavern of stuff to, to understand and wrap your brain around. Um, AOS kind of found, uh, I think a lot of people complain that it didn't have a grounding. Uh, because it was literally meant not to. It was meant to be this very open, blank canvas for, you know, to establish more design space. Because the entire history of planet Earth and uh, everything that human civilization has ever done apparently is too small to uh, be able to think of creative narrative designs. This is still the trope that they use for why they had to kill fantasy. It was too narrow. They couldn't. They didn't have enough room to roam on the entire planet of Earth. Um, so <laughs> anyway, um, so, so, uh, now I think that you have both, um, you will have, uh, the AOS community, which rocks. I can't, I mean, at least anyone I've ever seen out in public playing it is always fascinating, more diverse, uh, more, uh, you know, like wild with, with what they do, uh, from a hobby per- perspective, uh, just more into fun, uh, than maybe I've seen on the 40 K side, which has got kind of austere and serious at times. Um, you know, like that thing can continue to grow and be its its own its own its own world. But now I think the more broadly appealing um, sort of, um, you know, uh, like what 40K is to sci fi Warhammer fantasy is to fantasy, mm. that sort of just grab bag of every trope you could possibly think of, which for some reason became a weakness at some point. They decided, no, that's a terrible idea. Why would we want to have something that anyone who's a fan of any sort of broad fantasy trope, uh, you know, no, this is derivative. It's not good. You can't make IP out of that nonsense. They've licensed it a billion friggin times since anyway. Um, you know, now both sides have those things and both those communities can grow. The thing is though, like you're saying, warmer fantasy already has people who are fantasy pilled, who are, pro- who are coded to both be, uh, find this type of fantasy setting appealing and uh, who previously engaged with something that they could no longer get. So like that pool of potential customers who you can convert into people who buy books, models, play the game, whatever, is just vastly larger than Age of Sigmar uh, ever could be. Because or, it's even, got- or even 40K. Like, I, like, I'd, like to be, I'd like to be clear, while I know 40K is incredibly popular, it's the titan that won't be beat. 
40k, like when I very first walked into a Warhammer store all those years ago, I saw 40k and I was like, mm, I don't really get that. Like that's mm -hmm. space, that's space stuff, but like not for me. Whereas like I saw a wizard and a dragon and I'm like, I understand that. Like I get that immediately because it's just stuff I grew up with, you know, and like, and while we now see a lot of stuff that's like derivative of 40k, like hell divers, uh, as an example, you know, yeah. like uh, starship troopers, a bunch of other stuff like that. Like, you know, they or was 40k derivative of it who knows uh but the point is is like i still think i still think people are much more pe people much more understand warhammer fantasy battle than they understand 40k uh, can, can you imagine and this is a company too that had and i think in a lot of ways this is actually what doomed doomed warhammer fantasy um uh, is 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 so can you imagine a company that had the lord of the rings uh movie license mm. right so, like, can you imagine how a company that had that license could so completely miss the zeitgeist to the last 25 years, which was, yeah, Star Wars was 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 sort of out there and, and, and coming back. But um, but like we've seen Dungeons and Dragons, we've seen Game of Thrones, we've seen um, so many like The Witcher, like so many series that are especially from like a consumption of content perspective, like like uh, like um, you know like narrative stories that are grounded in fantasy, not sci-fi, be wildly wildly popular, and like 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 the water cooler appointment viewing type franchises that you know exist less and less and less in popular culture, and like the fact that Games Workshop purposely pivoted away from those that that type of setting mm. with a setting that has. Like there is a part of, of of Warhammer Fantasy that's like Game of Thrones. There's a part of Warhammer Fantasy that's like The Witcher. You know, like all of these things are reflected in the way that uh, you know those particular versions of, of fantasy styling comes out, how magical they are, etc. Come come about, and they completely abandoned it. And uh, I don't know. I just think it's 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 so funny that they just sort of walked away from what was so culturally resonant at the exact moment that it was reaching its peak. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's in Game Switch have never taken an opportunity to make a mistake, like in every si single situation ever. And yet so, here we are. Yeah, I, well, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Like, I think your your point about the titanically obvious IP uh, that was available to them and all of like the history of it, like, and the thing is, is so so to I maybe wrap up my point. Immediately became also the most, uh, probably the most popular uh, strategy game franchise ever. Yeah, no, like, it did. Like, like, uh, maybe like, like. Three Kingdoms is bigger, maybe, but that's because it has specific appeal in China. I like they canceled the DLC, uh, so I you can't see that it was actually that that big of a deal. Oh. Uh, you know, like so, like yeah, they they immediately stopped supporting uh, um, uh, Three Kingdoms. Although maybe off the hop, it was it was um, it, it was it was very popular. But like uh, you know, Total War as a franchise. Like I knew it, I played it because I'm I'm a history nerd. I mm. loved it. I thought it was awesome, and I I'm one of those guys who's like, man, I wish they still made historical games. Yeah, uh, specifically black powder ones, please. Um, like uh, so, like like that that was, um, you know that that Total War thing is made, um, made Creative Assembly. Like Creative Assembly was already there; they were doing well. But what really blew them up was the popularity of the Warhammer IP. At the ex literally a license they signed to 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 Creative Assembly, they signed that license with them, and then later on told them, "Oh, by the way, we're not going to be doing this anymore, suckers. <laughs> we're not going to make fantasy, idiots. But you still owe us a million dollars." Yeah, uh, but the uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so so I think to like bring us back to like wrapping up like the point, right? And obviously it's been a like, and it was not short, uh, but that's great because I think this has been a really good conversation. Uh, and I'd love everyone who's I listened to this to leave a bunch of comments on your thoughts. And obviously not about like, which is better because that's obviously silly. Yeah. And also not about like, you know, deep dive in the death of the thing. What I'm more focused on for me is, do I think that this is, that the old world is huge? And the answer is yes. Like, and, and that's, and, and this is meant to be, this is hopefully has been some sort of evidence and conversation, although I'll admit anecdotal in many cases, like, you know, about why. But to me, the reason I, again, just to be clear, the reason I think that this is its second biggest game and could be come 
its biggest game over time is because it's really relatable. Well, number one, why now is it popular? Numbers available to like the reception online, YouTube, etc., cetera, um, uh, and the conversations around it. And number two, uh, because of event attendance and people picking up and playing it, which is the very thin end of the wedge, right? And again, those are communities that are developing early. Like if we look at 40K, when it started to get a big push from Games Workshop, we saw it have like smaller numbers then like it, or not small numbers, it had numbers, then it had bigger numbers and bigger numbers, then it exploded. I can really see that um, being po like popular. And then looking to the future, so right now I think it's its second biggest game. Looking to the future, as we see releases like things like potentially Cathay, the other races, they haven't as of yet released an elven race. People fucking yeah. love elves. They fucking love them. They haven't released a normal humans like Empire. They haven't, they haven't released Empire. Right? Yeah. Which, like if anything, if there was, you know, like a space Marines of the old world, it was Empire. Um, so they haven't done any of that. We haven't gone through a single production cycle, a year, like, you know, a, a life cycle of the game yet, which is three years. So uh, we haven't had that. We're just six months in. And I already think we're at the stage of it. If it has blown up, it's there. So I think we're, I expect event attendance to increase. I'll point out, I'd like yeah. point out, six months in, half of the half of the Arcane Journal support already completed. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, for the core faction, for the, for the things that they said they're going to produce, uh, Arcane Journals for, which was nine factions, mm. we have four of them in six months. Mm. So that is like lightning pace development <laughs> as far as GW is concerned, and especially anyone from a fantasy context would be concerned. So sorry to interrupt, but I just want to point that out. That no, like, no, it's, it's fine. They man. haven't abandoned this at all. It's actually going real quick. And actually, to reference back to Val's point, yeah, like, you know, all of human history too, too thin. Like, we have got things like halflings potentially with the moot. That's on the map. Yeah, we have all of those elements that they can pick and choose from, as well as introducing us to new characters, new settings, uh, new races, or like, you know, revitalizing them, re-engineering them. Uh, I think they have a really good system with the mercenaries to like start introducing some more of these things as well, or just mm -hmm. even, I think the armies of renown. So that's my pitch. Like that's kind of my, you know, and I guess I've thrown that out to the wolves. I've thrown that out to Val. I've thrown that out to all of you. Let me know if you think I'm talking shit. And if you think, nice, no, it's actually really small. No one cares about it. We've got loads of copies in our local game store. We'll see. But Games Workshop themselves have recognized that it's so massive that they've had to change the scope of the project. That's a quote that they've put in, that they've had yeah. to change the very scope <laughs> of what they're producing. And as, and as, and as and we, like any white viewer of the show knows how the marketing looked when they were rolling it out, um, like, uh, you know, this is for the for the old heads. All you losers that have been begging us to talk about Warhammer Fantasy again, fine, shut the hell up. Here's your old models back. Just leave us alone. Please, if you're new to this hobby, don't bother with this shit. The models are metal. They They're literally said that. In, oh, oh, my God. That's they all they literally said. said. That was how it was framed. The marketing framing for this was, if you are into Warhammer games, please don't. Please don't look at this. Don't move this. on. Yeah. Don't buy this. And uh, and now and now this is the quote in their investor report. Sales suggest that it is appealing to both new and veteran hobbyists alike. As with everything we do, we have grand plans for the years ahead. They did not have grand plans for the years ahead. <laughs> I can guarantee you that much. They cut half of the factions out of the release. They removed it from from uh, from sharing models from from Age of Sigmar. Um, so that, uh, you know, they made difficult, the, the barrier to entry enormous. They bumped the release from December, I'm uh, sorry, from a November, December pre-Christmas launch where it was supposed to be. They bumped it to January. Every content producer they sent, um, free shit to, to review and hype up their, their game was literally trying to enjoy Christmas with their families while that launch was occurring. Yeah. They could not have tried harder to make this game fucking be a wet fart uh, uh, on on release. Uh, aside from, I would say, the people actually involved in making it, who provided everything a community who was thirsty for this the, needed to be able to jump on it and run with it, like we have and like so many others have. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, the the, the future is bright for old uh, for for old world and for Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah. So let me know what you think about perhaps pitch. even brighter than AOS and maybe even 40k. I think it gets bigger than 40k. Like, like now you want some hyperbole? Yeah, you want to listen to me talk shit? This is the same shit I talked the year before 
the fucking launch. And I was like, this is going to blow you out the water. Everyone's like, what does Rob know? Yeah, like, I think it gets bigger. It's got more appeal. Because when you think about playing a battle on the tabletop, it looks like Total War. When you think yeah. about doing, yeah. like when, like when you, because everyone who ever grew up, you go to school, you get taught about Alexander the Great, you get taught about Napoleon, whatever you do, you picture the battle. That's what you do. You get shown it in movies, you see the lines, you understand how it works, right? Uh, modern warfare, like drone warfare, uh, fucking, you know, even like house to house clearance stuff, like is stuff that is very alien to the, the mental mind unless you live inside that landscape. Maybe kids who grew up playing like fucking loads of COD and Fortnite, that'll end up being their game and they'll end up as squad gamers and that's the miniatures that they'll pick up, right? But you know, the concept of big line battles and all that stuff is, is a historic feature. And it makes more yeah. sense when also, you look. Also, a lot, of, a lot of people have been in a fight, mm. you know, like they've, 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 they've had to run it. They've, you know, they played sports. They've run headlong into somebody. Um, you know, not a lot of people, thank goodness, have had to like shoot guns and, you know, be in, be in perilous combat. Um, but I will, I will say that, yes, that's tabletop. I struggle again, cause it's on cost fallacy, you know, much like AOS, like uh, the only way you're going to have um, fant so old world fantasy surpass 40k um, is is by growing organically more tabletop players um, who are into Warhammer fantasy. Where I think uh, old world could easily surpass 40k is in popular culture. Um, I think it is it is just so much more um, uh, accessible. The world. <laughs> Like if they sold this to Amazon, um, Amazon, you know, I, although they, they already have their Lord of the Ring franchise, but like if they sold this to somebody um, who wanted to make a gritty fantasy thing, the world of, of, of Warhammer from a human's perspective is far more interesting, I think, than the world of 40K from a human's perspective. Mm. Um, you know, you are, you are walking with gods at all times in, in 40K. Uh, you, are, you are, you know, like it, it's hard to be anything but the child at the table when you're looking at it through human eyes uh, in Warmer 40,000. Whereas, you know, in, in Warmer Fantasy, the Emperor Karl Franz is a G with a giant fucking hammer. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, and uh, so, so, yeah, I think the stuff that they're not doing right now is the stuff I think that could, you know, pulp a bunch of pulp fantasy novels, like a, a series based around the Great War of Cha Against Chaos. That, to me, is a very, like, if it's done right, you know, there's your replacement for for Horus Heresy. It's also um, it's also more like like uh, 40k is like riddled with like the need to understand the irony. It's maybe at its core that irony, which is more difficult to see as time goes on, right? Like in a world of like mm -hmm. non-ironic, like destructive uh, Marvel characters, they're like we mm -hmm. saved the planet. It's like you destroyed a city, millions are dead. Like you're a criminal, yeah. But you made a space marine fits. A space marine fits right in there. Yeah, uh, you know. Like yeah. Uh, so I yeah. I think it's all. I think it's all. Uh, I think it's all very very interesting. Um, uh, like the future, and I'd love to know what everyone else thinks. That's what I'd love to know. Let us know in the comments if you have got this far in the video. Let us know what you think. Uh, like me and Val love reading through these comments and and, and finding out this stuff. And I just want to want to say one final thought, which was I think most importantly brought brought up uh, by someone in chat just now moments ago, which is um, regardless of how it goes, um, uh, it's not historicals and it's not trains. It's not, and and that and that that keeps me keeps me going for another day that I uh, you know I don't have a train set, which is great. Uh, this is a very good thing. All right. Well, thanks to Val for a great convo. Thanks to the Twitch chat who we do this live with. And let us know what you think. Uh, because in my opinion, uh, like this game is absolutely huge. Also, maybe like just take a moment also to just recognize that like um, a lot of the online discourse is very odd around this. Like, is it dead? Do they want it to be dead? There's a lot of hyperbolic stuff that's talked about uh, because it just it's a good it's a good it's a good uh, people. It, it's good for people's content. Uh, it's not necessarily good mm -hmm. for the existence of a community. Uh, try to find yourself people who want to build communities, even if it's not us, right? Find yourself people who want to build communities. Don't find yourself people who want to just deconstruct and destroy communities. That feels yeah. like a negative uh, place to support, right? I think that's a fair and, statement. And believe it or not, you're going to find those people where everyone on the internet will tell you you won't find them. You're going to find them at events. Yes. So get out. 
get out to your events. Make friends with your TOs. Help them out. Support them. Show up. Show up and play. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's where, honestly, all my best friends come from, including you, Rob. Hey, let's go. Same. Go to events. Go play. Go to your local club. Play. Put a little poster up saying, I'd like to play Warhammer Fantasy Ball, or I'd like to play The Old World. Does anyone want to play with me? Let's go. Yeah, I'll play 500 points, 200 points, whatever. Like, go play. It's the only way you can do it. And then you'll make more friends, which is nice. So have a nice day. Thanks for listening to Square Based. And thanks to Val. And thanks to you. See you guys soon.